good day everybody it's march 11th 2022 and i'm filming this today and it's another cold one i've already got my load on the trailer we had to deliver out in great falls like up in uh sort of a little further north of lac de Bonny in manitoba i delivered there first thing this morning and we delivered here to selkirk where i am now this afternoon just north of winnipeg got to reload on me got to bring that into the city i'll give you a look at it right now it's not really that cold outside it's the wind the wind is really cold but uh it's not really that big of a load but Still in the Western Star. It's really grown on me. I actually really like it. If you're wondering about my Peterbilt, <clears throat> it's waiting for a bunch of parts for uh, safety. So once I get that done, we'll be back in that truck, I'm pretty sure. But in the meantime, I'm not complaining about being in the in the star. Pretty nice. So I haven't bugged you guys in a couple of days about coming to work here with us at Keystone. Now oh, we're looking for drivers. This truck, this is unit 3088. I'm using it right now, but as soon as I'm done with it, it needs a driver for on the highway. And we're looking for people with uh, uh, CDL license, commercial driver's license, two years experience driving in Canada, uh, <clears throat> Canadian citizen or a permanent resident here, you know, you're already living here and already have your right to work all worked out, uh, you got your experience, you can email me at truckerjosh at keystonewestern.com. The email is down below in the description of all my videos, you just gotta scroll down to the bottom, you'll find a whole bunch of other fun goodies down there too where you can find me in other parts of the internet. But that email, truckerjoshkeystonewestern.com, you can email me there and uh, we can chat. Just make sure you're eligible. And if you are eligible, I can shoot you straight through with a personal recommendation and a personal reference straight to our recruiter and make sure that your resume lands on her desk and make sure that she gets back to you. Okay? And then I'll check in with you a couple days later to make sure that, you know, the ball's rolling and that uh, we got everything in motion. See, so you got an in. I can get you in. Can't promise everybody a job, but uh, if you meet the criteria, you want to drive with us, uh, we could use your help. And you could be driving this truck or one just like it, or you could be driving a T680 uh, with either Keystone or Darkle, same company, same owner, uh, well, two legally separate companies, they're merged, they run out of the same office. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to have you on here. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, we are looking for uh, a regional long haul. Uh, we are asking that you be able to commit to being gone for 10 to 14 days at a time. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be gone 10 to 14 days at a time. That's just like, that's a good average to give out there just so you get a kind of a feel like, okay, this could be what, what happens. Maybe you'll be home more often. Maybe the odd trip might be a little longer, but I've heard of some other companies that leave their drivers on the road for months and months. No, no, no. Family is a big part of us here. They want to get you home to your family, but they ask that you uh, be ready for, you know, an average of, you know, 10 to 14 days on the highway. If you're cool with all that, send me an email and use your help, like I said. I'm in my 11th year here, too, so I've been here over 10 years. So I, I hope that that uh, says a lot about the place i really like it here you know they've always treated me very well and uh you, know, you can see all the different kinds of trips i've taken right here on youtube over the last 10 years i've been making videos here on the internet since 2011. so uh, you got a pretty good uh look inside of what we're all about so if you think it's for you we can work something out
happened here? Oh. CB in this truck, so I'm just gonna warn all these drivers coming up here. These guys can't do anything about it yet. Northbound there, if you can reroute, I would. That road's gonna be closed for a long time. Guy lost his uh, load of railway ties across the entire road there, and there's a pretty bad accident. So you're going to be stuck here for quite a while. If you can reroute, do it before it's too late. Reroute, driver. That road's going to be closed for a long time. Railway ties across the road. You're going to be here for an hour or two at least. No response. Not even one. You see, that's why I don't use a CB up here. No one, no one has a CB. No one uses it. In my truck, I don't even have one. And that's why, that's exactly why. There's no point. CB radios are much more popular in the United States. Up here in Canada, depending on where you go. But uh, for the most part, that's the response you'll get when you try to use one. I'm gonna try to keep warning these drivers here, but I don't think they're gonna hear me. Hey, northbound, you got a big blockade coming up at Roblin or just past Roblin Boulevard. You're not gonna be able to get through for a couple of hours. There's been a bad accident up ahead. You're gonna wanna reroute. You can't get to the Trans Canada from here. You're gonna wanna reroute. Nothing. I can hear someone talking on there far away. But, uh, no one here. I'm gonna warn them once more when I go past the Esso truck stop there for anybody who's who's gonna be coming this way, but I mean, what do you say, right? What do you say? Road's blocked, don't go that way. That's all you can tell them. From here at the Esso, uh, they can go down Highway 2 or Highway 3. I think it's Highway 2 and get around, but uh, I think I think traffic's gonna be backed up all the way to here very soon. Looks like there's been another accident up ahead here. At least here we can go around on the service road. And go this way. I don't know what's going on here, but this road is closed too. Where that road is. I've got to get onto McGilvery, the next road up there, and go into the city. I'm hoping that they haven't blocked it there as well. Yikes, look at all that. What is going on today? So traffic is blocked going that way, traffic's blocked going this way. Yikes. Oh yeah, looks like I can get through that way. Okay, good. Looks like we have a blockage on southbound, but if you're headed northbound, you're gonna be blocked at Roblin Boulevard as well. There's a bad accident up there. So if you're headed west, 
you're not gonna make it to Highway 1 westbound, guys. Take Highway 2 and then head back north up there because you're not gonna get through at Roblin. There's a guy who lost his load of railway ties. You see an ambulance coming through here now, he's probably headed there. So in Oak Bluff here, I had to come into the Timmy's and the ESO to do a U-turn so that I can head east into Winnipeg. But for some reason it looks like they have the southbound perimeter here blocked off. And like we saw up north there, a few miles down the road, the northbound lanes are blocked off as well. So if drivers want to head westbound, they've got to head down this road that I'm on behind me. I've been able to get a hold of like one or two drivers on here, but... few people on here, but uh, majority of people don't. Like I was saying earlier, that's why I don't even bother with a CB. It's more of an American thing. Up here, the CBs have sort of been phased out. And, you know, they sort of went the way of the VHS and the 8-track tapes. Okay, so we can't go that way. You got the police here blocking the highway. Wonder what happened that way. I'm gonna warn these guys one more time. Hey, all you guys coming up here north on the perimeter, you're not gonna make it to the westbound Trans Canada. Turn here at the two. You're gonna wanna take Highway 2. There's an accident up ahead. You're not gonna get through for a long time. You're gonna wanna take Highway 2 and then meet up with the Trans Canada further, uh, further west of here. Nothing. All these trucks here, not one person responds. <laughs> so I'm glad I finally got to show you guys why I don't run with a CB. Now, hopefully that answers your questions because I get that question a lot. Like, why don't you have a CB, Trucker Josh? They're not very popular here. And maybe they should be, maybe they should, I don't know. But I can tell you something, if I was in the US right now, every single one of these trucks would be yapping. They'd all be yapping to each other, they're all talking. So whenever you're in a traffic jam and you're in a car, you don't even know it, but uh, all the trucks are talking to each other. <laughs> well, well, the truckers are, the trucks don't talk, you know what I mean. No, I'm not going left, I'm going straight. We got the green arrow going left. What a mess. that was all about warn them one more time here I'm trying to warn the drivers that if they're going westbound you're not going to get past Roblin Boulevard there's a big accident up ahead you want to take highway 2 west not sure if anyone's got the radios on out here but you're going to want to take 2 west or you're going to be stuck on the highway on the northbound west perimeter here all day so southbound's blocked here at the two northbound is blocked further north from here a few miles up near roblin both directions blocked get off the perimeter highway take the two west can't say i didn't try Say my name. What's that? Come back. Hey Josh, which way did you go? I'm going into the city. Uh, if you're headed westbound, there's a huge accident up near Roblin Boulevard. There, you're going to be stuck on the perimeter. If you need to head head west, go to, uh, down the two. 
But southbound's closed here at the two, it looks like, and northbound's closed up near Roblin. Yeah, I know the Roblin wasn't on the southbound yard, but we were dropped out to earlier, so it cuts down there. We'll be going to the road to the south. It's following up there. All right, I was trying to warn the drivers, but no one runs with a radio anymore. That's my co-worker talking to me right now. Yep, well, you have a good one. Stay safe. So that was my coworker. He runs with a radio. He he drives that blue truck, the one with the two radios. <laughs> he runs with his CB on. Nobody else does apparently. So I'm the last one that can really uh, give anyone a hard time about not running with a CB. I don't usually run with a CB, but now you know why around where I'm from. I don't know, maybe it's just Manitoba. I found in Canada in general, CB radios are just not that popular. They seem to have sort of gone out of style and become outdated like VHS tapes and eight track tapes. It's an old technology. Like CB radios are from the, what, the 70s, 60s and 70s. And most of us run with newer technologies and uh, you know GPS systems and you know instant radar weather programs in our trucks up here in Canada because we, we have bad weather in Canada. We always have snowstorms, blizzards in the mountains. There's mudslides, rock slides, uh, floods, all kinds of stuff. And most drivers nowadays, at least from what I can understand, uh, they have like screens in their truck that are hooked up to, you know, internet that give you like up to date live weather forecasts, uh, traffic forecasts ahead of you. There's even little alerts that if there's an accident ahead of you, it'll give you an alert and say, hey, traffic's slowing down up ahead, watch out. Or hey, weather's gonna get bad up ahead, watch out with a little uh, screen of what's going on. And uh, that's become more popular to use up here. Cause I know in, in the US and uh, CBs are still very popular and people who defend the CB radio defend it for the exact reasons that I showed you here, to try to warn people of things coming up ahead that they may not be aware of. Maybe their little uh, screens in front of them haven't shown them that there's traffic up ahead or an accident or weather. And you're like, hey guys, just so you know, like reroute yourself or you're gonna get stuck up ahead here on the highway for a very long time. That's what the CB radio is good for. But honestly, for the last like 10 years, really, almost my whole, <laughs> long haul career, I either turned it off or took it out of my truck completely because I found that there was more garbage on there than actual useful information. When you get down into some areas that use the CB a lot, I find that the people who are on there sometimes tend to be bullies, bullying, like using their anonymity, sort of like people do online, right? Because you can't tell who's talking. You just know somebody's talking. They use the anonymity to be able to say whatever's on their mind, whether it be like uh, just bullying people or whether it be like some racist on the radio or something or uh, just random stuff, just making fun of people or just being rude to each other online, uh, online on the CB. That's what I found the majority of my experience on the CB radio was. It was just people being mean to each other. You know, they pull up to the truck stop face to face. They're never going to say that stuff to each other. But as soon as, you know, you're on the radio and ooh, you're in the safety of your truck and you have anonymity, who knows who's talking, right? Right away, everybody's just running their mouth and just being, uh, what's a good word? Just being dinks to each other. And I, I didn't like that. I didn't want to be a part of that atmosphere. Uh, very rarely, I would hear something on the radio saying, hey, watch out up ahead. There's traffic. But now... Nowadays, like I said, I got technology in my truck that'll warn me that there's traffic coming up ahead an hour before I get there. Long before anyone with a CB radio would ever have a chance to warn me. I already know that there's traffic coming. I already know that it's at a standstill. And I don't need someone to warn me because I already have new technologies in my truck, like up-to-date technologies that, that tell me that. And it tells me what's coming up ahead. Ah, uh, I have mixed emotions and mixed feelings about the CB radio. Uh, I would encourage you, I would still always encourage people that if you want one in your truck, 
put it in there. Give it a shot for yourself. Maybe you like it. Maybe it's useful for you. For me, I, I just... It made me angry listening to people on there. It just made me very angry. Uh, so I just... I actually didn't have one in my truck. In my truck that I'm driving, 3006, there's no CB radio in there. And I have never... It's never even crossed my mind to put one in there. But I'm also, you know, more regional now. And people in this region don't use it in the first place. I don't know. The CB debate, right? Oh, yes. My comment section is going to be on fire. I can just hear the keyboards. Just... <laughs> I can hear your keyboards from here. That's what they sound like to me. <laughs> people, people, uh, some people live and die by the CB radio, and others uh, don't want anything to do with it. Me, I'm sort of just like, meh, if there's one in the truck, cool. If there's not, I don't care. Whatever. Uh, depends on what region you're from. I don't know. That's it for today, anyways, guys. Uh, if you want a radio in your truck, put one in your truck. Uh, turn it on. Be nice to each other. Be helpful to each other. And uh, let me know down below in the comments section. Do you run with a CB? Is it always on? And do you find it useful? Or do you find that more often than not, there's just a bunch of jerks on there being jerks? Let me know what your experience is. And I'm going to keep editing here. All right. I'll be reading your comments. Thanks for joining me today. There'll be another vlog. I guess it's Friday. There'll be a vlog on Monday. I'm a little bit behind on my editing right now, so there's another one coming soon. Don't worry.